Hello all you lovely people. For those of you that don't know, my name's Amanda. This is Let's Sew and it's um, a sewing channel aimed at sewers who've got no experience, so starting from scratch. This is the third video in the series. There's going to be many, many, many more. Um, so we're going to go into today, we're going to go into patterns and understanding patterns and different types of patterns because there's a couple of different types as well, excuse me. Now I have got a very sore throat today so I have got myself a cup of tea, red, red berry tea. So grab yourself a cuppa and we'll explain but before you do so I just want to say thank you to everyone that's subscribed and for those of you that haven't subscribed I please 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 ask you if you will subscribe which will help my channel greatly. Help me to grow the channel, means more people are learning to sew, which means less waste going to landfill. And the good thing about sewing your own is that nobody will have the same thing as you. It's not like going into one of the shops that, you, that that's on the high street and buying this top, that trouser suit, this whichever bustier or whatever you, whatever you're buying, knowing that there is definitely, definitely, definitely going to be somebody else in this country wearing that item so your own there won't be you can guarantee it because you've made it you've made it unique to you although somebody could buy the pattern but because of your fabric choice because of your embellishments because of how you finish it how you sew it whether you line it whether you don't line it there's thousands and thousands of thousands of different permutations of why this is impossible for someone else to be sewing the same as you are. So, um, yeah, so moving back, I've gone off at a tangent as normal. Yes, please subscribe if you haven't. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, if you've got any requests of videos you want to see, or if you've got any queries about anything that you want, you want me to answer, just put them in the comments box below and I will answer them. Or I'll do my best to answer them anyway. Um, and then the other thing, I just need to check my notes because I've got a few um, things to tell you. First of all, I've took... The, I, last week in coronavirus lockdown, I, was, I had a little bit of a wobble. I was a bit mm, down, fed up, upset whatever you want to call it, I wasn't myself um, and I put on my Facebook page that I, that I was having a bad moment um, and this girl, a friend of mine on there, this girl that I know, she messaged me and said think of the things you want to do and do it, just do it, something to look forward to, just do it anyway, a couple of days later I picked up the sewing magazine that I, I, I get and there's a competition in there for dressmaker of the year so I've entered. Ah, scary, scary stuff. So yeah, I've got no illusions that there are many, many people out there that will be entering. I've submitted my entry. We will see. But it definitely cheered me up a bit, gave me a bit of courage. I thought, why not? Why not? Why can't? I, why can't I go for it? So I've gone for it anyway, uh, and we'll see what happens. Um, the prize is for a load of sewing goodies and one thing and another, and I'm so excited. I get, they've got my entry because they've emailed to say they've had it, so fingers crossed. Yes. So again, please help me, help my channel grow, um, and this will be a real, real springboard to much, much better things which I can bring for you, to you, from wherever we, we end up, whatever this journey takes us on. Yeah, okay, right, back to sewing. Um, back to patterns, should I say. <laughs> I do get a bit fuddled sometimes, you have to excuse me. Right, yes, patterns. There are many different forms of patterns. I buy a lot of sewing books, um, and in the books, which I'm just I'm picking this one at random to show you. This I'm not sponsored by any of the products I've shown you today. Um, I don't get paid by any of the companies. These are things that I bought for my own money for my own personal use. So anything that you see is purely my own um, possession. Basically, I don't as I say I don't get paid. Um, 
I wish I did, <laughs> but I don't get paid from any of the companies mentioned. Now, this book is one that I like. It's by Cabbages and Roses. It's homemade, vin homemade vintage, um, promoted by Cabbages and Roses, or, or promote, what do they call it? Uh, sponsored, possibly. Um, and it's by Christina Stutt, Strutt, even. <laughs> and it's got over 40 quick and easy sewing projects. So the kind of projects um, in this book are... Let's see, there are uh, hot water bottle covers, canopies, lampshade covers, curtains, pillows, tablecloths, um, gifts, all sorts of things that um, that you can look to sew. Incidentally, this book, our next um, video is going to be about fabric and we're going to cut out our first project, which is going to be a lingerie bag or a laundry bag or it can be a Santa sack is which is which is what I went through with you last time and the pattern I am getting on to why it's, it's in the pattern section of these videos is because the pattern for this one is actually written in the book of what exactly what you need what kind of fabric what kind of size you need to cut it and the pattern is actually written in here for you to draw yourself I will go through the measurements with you because it depends what you want to make really but so, so that's just one type of pattern that's available on books um loads of books you pick up lots of patterns thousands of sewing books let me just pop that out of the way and um, the other type of pattern are downloadable patterns now i this month's magazine that i've got i um, i love this dress absolutely love it so what i've done i've downloaded this pattern uh, and printed it off at home i haven't done anything with it yet but i've downloaded it ready so i can show you how a download pattern comes out so that's a picture of it and um the instructions are in here and how much fabric you need etc and let me show you the pattern that's just the other magazine one second i've put it together with a little envelope here so i don't lose any so this is the pattern downloaded um it's the isla dress and there's a picture on the front so that you know what it relates to and then inside well these are all pages pages off my printer it's just a box standard printer that i've used um what i use for uh, my computer printed letters and stuff and this is just box standard a4 paper a really cheapy chips one cheap as chips one should i say so you get the pattern paper you print them off and this dotted line around here generally is a border it doesn't mean that's part of your pattern it's where it's so that all the patterns are sized to fit together so you cut the borders off and then you cut your pattern piece out you don't need to cut the borders off but if you're wanting to file them or anything you can put, cut the borders off and put your um, pieces in an envelope um, i will cut out these i always cut out the biggest size on a pattern that's my first tip to you so this one is the front neck facing and it says cut one on the fold from fabric and one from interfacing we'll come on to that and then further in the pile i think this is 30 odd pages which sounds daunting but a lot of them what you need to do is let's have a look is this one way up and then the next bit yeah you normally need to this way around I haven't looked at it yet properly you, you cut your border off and where the pattern line are they usually stick one to the other to the other it forms a bigger pattern piece so if you're following on this one as i say i haven't cut it out or anything yet if you follow the instructions on whatever it tells you to do on the pattern pieces or in your magazine you won't go wrong as long as you stick to the patterning the, the, the description and the instructions you cannot go wrong okay so i need to look at that one and give that a cut out i'm gonna have a go at making that myself i've got a few um fabric um pieces ready to go i've got a few things that i want to sew um these are my newest ones which i'll show you these are box standard patterns that you get in the sewing shops and things um you can buy them on ebay which tends to be cheaper sometimes to be fair you can buy second hand ones on ebay as well um these are new ones the newest ones that i've got this so you can see this is a new look one there's lots of different manufacturers as well of patterns so now if the pattern if the color of the um picture on the front 
puts you off and you can't see past that to, to, and imagine in your mind what it looked like in a different fabric if you turn over on the back there's an actual drawing which shows the patterns or the, what their garment's going to be um, just in black and white so then you can imagine I mean if you wanted a yellow one so you could even colour it in I think oh yeah it'll look really nice in yellow or some people can see past the colour that they've made the garment up in on the front other people can't there's nothing wrong with that but if you've got a colour in mind and you want to do it in a different colour see what it looks like colour it in on the back if you want to so yeah these are new ones lots of different manufacturers patterns of the said this these again another new look that's a new one I just bought this and I bought the fabric to make this it's um, a leisure wear it's like they were like jogging bottoms pajama bottoms whatever you want to call them and a little top and a long coat it's got a hood on I think but I'm not put the hood on I, uh, I don't need the hood on because it's going to be worn outside it's not going to be a dressing gown um, so I'll show you about omitting things like that as well as we go through the uh, video series um, I've got a skirt pattern, shorts and trousers that's all in one pattern these multi-use ones are really good value um, because you've got lots of options on these these different tops very similar but each one's a little bit different this is what i mean about you'll never have one the same as someone else um this one are uh, long wide leg trousers sorry and a dress and this one's a top a dress and a skirt and then this one's a dress shorts long shirt and a tabard top so there's loads of loads of options as i say i mean you, could, you don't have to do these in match it you can do them contrasting you could have pattern top and plain shorts or vice versa uh, you could have these all in one color and do the long um, shirt to go over the top if you're going on holiday say in a nice tropical print do these maybe in orange or lemon something like this color would be nice this is a corally color and then a jungly print top uh, a jungly print pattern on the top so it's floaty nice floaty fabric um, so what I will do, there's loads of patterns as I say, that I've even got some here that I've actually drawn myself, these are on bits of wallpaper, where I took, took a pattern from uh, something that I really like, this one is a short sleeve top pattern, um, and it's something I've either bought and liked and thought oh I'll take a pattern from that, or one that I've just drawn up myself and thought I wonder if you can draw like a t-shirt to shape. how would that work and just what paper I did have a piece of wallpaper at the time so I scribble things and all sorts of things now vintage patterns as well let me have a look should have a couple in here I think yeah this is a definite vintage pattern I love it though again it's a shift dress shape the a-line skirt and the nice it's very flattering flatters most figures does this um there's this shape um, and they say short sleeves you can make, although that's short sleeved uh, this one and these have got no sleeves in you could make the short sleeves long sleeved if you wanted it longer sleeved you like prefer long sleeves some people do some don't you could have it three quarters you can change to suit what you want it to be um, and these patterns the patterns that I've taken out of a magazine um, this is one that I used to collect years ago. Excuse me, let me have a little drink and cure my throat a little bit. Oh, you've got a nice drink and a biscuit, maybe? Right. I'll show you these. These bags are what use, um, card makers use. And I like to put my patterns in these. It keeps them clean and dust-free and it keeps all the bits together. If you haven't got any craft bags, use a sandwich bag or paper bag. Excuse my dog barking. They've gone outside to have a bark. So this was the pattern in the magazine. I've tore the picture out so I could see what it was, what it looked like. Um, and these, this is the pattern piece. Well, the pattern, the pattern itself. Um, and then inside, when you open it all up, you've got the pattern pieces. This, as you can see, hasn't been cut out yet. Um, yes, yeah, so these pattern pieces, and on the back these kind of things we're going to come on to in a second and then inside there as well there's your instructions so yeah keep them together 
if you wanted it from it, even an envelope, you could keep them in an envelope. Anything that would hold them all together. But these bags are really low cost um, method anyway. I think there's, I think these cost me about three pound for fifty. These plastic bags. So what card makers put the cards in? I've got a self seal top, and I just slide them in home sideways, and then I've got them in a little vintage wooden drawer. I'll show you, which we bought from a cat boot sale. It's just a drawer like that. I've got a few of these. Um, they don't fit in anything. They sit on my shelf, but I know they sit on my shelf in my conservatory. I know that they're all together. I know that. Um, the protector from dust and um, when I come to use it they'll be the perfect as they were when I put them in there going forward that's another thing always put your patterns back together and don't leave them scattered about everywhere so you'll get lost with where you what you're doing and where you are right I'm going to go through a pattern envelope with you and explain to you what's on each one the layout on each one may be slightly different or the terminology could be slightly different but it'll be clear once you understand what the, the envelope contains and what it's telling you the um, information will be fairly then easy to understand on a different envelope for a different pattern even if it's slightly different terminology so i'll pick one at random i'll just pop these all back in the box i need to get bags for these like I said, plastic envelopes or bags or whatever you want to call it. And I'll just pick the top one, which is the this one. I haven't opened these yet, so I've no idea what it's what the layout is inside or anything. So we're, we're taking it this time together. Okay, so and once I've done the description of what is actually on the envelope, front and back, We'll go into what's inside it and I'll actually show you the pattern pieces. Excuse me while I put my glasses on. Right, so on the front of this one, it tells you the maker, which is simplicity, and the pattern number, which is K1069. It shows you a real person on the front, a photograph of a real person, whereas on some of the older patterns, if you have, let me show you. Um, you haven't got a picture of a real person, it's a drawing. I'm trying to get one what's um, an actual pattern, not a magazine one. These ones, this is a drawing um, of a person. Uh, I do actually like and prefer, I think, the ones with actual people on the front. Um, I just think it makes it easier for you to picture yourself in the garment if you especially for new sewers um so yeah but either or the both the both will do the same job both the patterns will sew the garment that's pictured on the front so it's just personal preference really and i think updated um times and, and patterns and things the center use now photography is much easier to access um and developing and printing and things i think it's much easier for them to use an actual model on the front rather than have somebody draw it on there so Yes, we have got Simplicity, K1069 at the top. It tells you the size, US size, is 12 to 20. Now, if you know about sizing, you'll know that US sizing, European sizing, um, and worldwide sizing are all different. The US sizing is normally bigger than our sizing. Um so if you're a 12 say in america let me get this right way around if we're if you're a 10 in the uk say that's about a size 14 in america um the sizings are all different but that's on clothing that you buy on patterns the sizing is the same so uk and us and euro it's the same size however on patterns you don't you don't pick the size that you are off the shelf so say if you take a size 12 off the shelf you don't pick that size i'll come on to this with you in a second because your pattern is made to fit you not an off the peg um or off the shelf item okay so on the, oh, so we've got the colours, we've got the different views and different options with the pattern. So view A, it's showing you in one, 
two two different colours and view B is shorter looks similar doesn't it but it's a little bit shorter this one's totally different this is view D view C are shorts and view E is a wrap round skirt now you can't really tell that from there um, but you'll see in, on the back in a second it tells you who's designed or who's produced the pattern and it's just got the American flag because this one was designed in America so if we turn over now onto the back it's got on here and I'll point with my stick it's a skewer <laughs> my pointy stick is a skewer um, it shows you on the back the actual diagram of the pictures on the front so view a b c the culottes or trousers wide leg trousers view a is a full length trouser view b is the crops and view c is the shorts now it's also telling you there's a belt here that goes with view a and view c yeah view c sorry i couldn't read it backwards and then this is the wrap round skirt diagram this is view d and view e so i was on the first page i thought this was well it is shorts but the length of this can also be shortened or lengthened so you have view d and view e on there as well now at the top it's um it tells you what it is you back it's backwards on there isn't it i didn't i never thought about that i should have done it in the mirror for you but anyhow it says misses wide leg pants two lengths or shorts and wrap skirt in two lengths so it's giving you your options on that now the next column down is fabric now this is just an indication of the best type of fabrics that will work in the best way with this particular pattern um, this one is saying it's good in crepe crepe back satin linen types silky types um, and view a and d will also be good in a double georgette view b c and e also in cotton type chambray's extra fabric is needed to match plaids which are checks stripes or one-way design fabric so when we come on to the fabric that you need you just need to bear in mind if you get a pattern that needs to match up or if it's a tartan pattern or anything like that you will need to allow extra fabric if you want to match your um, design up which it's best to do that if you can do that but I would recommend as a beginner that you get a plain fabric or an all-over pattern that don't need matching because it can get you're better off getting some experience before you try and match patterns up okay and then notions some envelopes say notions some envelopes say requirements notions are just the other bits that you need to make make the garment so like thread you need thread that matches your fabric and that's the same for every item i would suggest that you'd get a black thread and a white thread in your kit and then as you're going along um and doing more projects and more items you'll collect thread ask your ask your relatives if they've got any thread they don't use lots of people have bought bits have bought bobbins of thread and might only have needed to sew a button on they don't there's no plans of using the thread anytime soon ever again so a lot of people will give you stuff um if if you ask do you need it have you got any spare sewing stuff or anything like that i collected quite a bit of things for that i was doing some charity work uh, and i collected quite a lot of threads and uh, embellishments which are like sequins and buttons and things like that my dog whining i think he wants to come in but you can get in because the door's open it's just a bit of a diva um yeah so notions threads uh, and then it says for view a b and c one nine inch I'm over here aren't I? one nine inch invisible zipper and also it says uh your thread now when we were talking about measuring and sizing the best thing to do is to measure yourself and not go by the sizes that they do in the shops so on here it shows you body measurements let me just turn around for sizing help there's the website normally but your body measurements you've got bust waist 
bust and waist to start with, and then hip, which is generally, the hip measurement is generally nine inches below your waist. So you would measure from the thinnest part of your waist, and then put your tape down the side where your hip is, measure nine inches down, and then leave the tape measure there and twiddle it around so it goes around your hip. That is normally your hip measurement um, um, for uh, your figure shape. And then the back to neck waist, which is from your back here where the, the top of your, the, like the collar, the, the collar area would be, uh, down to your waist. It tells you that measurement as well. If you're between sizes, so say, uh, you've got a bust of 31 and a half, a waist of um, 25 and a hip of 34 and a half. That's between sizes. Um, I would, what it's showing you is that those particular measurements suit a size 12, apart from the bust, which would be a size 10. I would always cut out for the bigger size. And then you can always adjust the pattern a little bit, adjust your fabric when you've sewn it, before you sew it. I would always make it up in the bigger size. Um, and then you know you've got enough fabric and it's not going to be too small on your hip and your waist. If you do the tent, it'll be a little bit big on the bust area, but you can soon adjust that as well. And then it tells you the equivalent pattern size. So a size 8 is a 34 in a European size. But as I say, we don't usually use these. It's just to give you an indication to make it a bit easier to, to find your, your gauge, if you like. And then it'll tell you here that each view that's pictured on the front of the pattern. Let me see if I can do this this way for you. So each view, view A, B, C, D, it tells you each view here. The two figures underneath here, the 45 and the 60, these ones, 45 and the 60, that's the width of the fabric. Manufacturers make fabrics in set widths, and you can be anything between 36 up to 45, up to 60 inches wide. Um, 150 centimeters they all come in different sizes width way you cannot alter that width ways all you're buying is the length of fabric to make up the pattern so whichever fabric you like if you picked if you when you got to the shop if it was 45 wide you need to adjust your um, yardage or meterage appropriately so if it was 45 wide on this view here you would need one and a half meters or yards but at 60 wide you need a little bit less so it's one and three eighths if you are not sure what you need to buy fabric wise take your pattern to the shop to the fabric shop Show them what you're wanting to make and they will help you. Just explain that you know when you're not sure about measuring the fabric, they will help you. They are quite knowledgeable in the shop. They know what they're doing. They know about measuring. They know about meterage, which is metric, obviously, or yardage. A lot of patterns have still got it in yards and feet and inches and things like that. A lot of them are in metric now. But typically, um, the, the theory is the same. The wider the fabric, the less fabric length you will need to buy. So that tells you all your views and all the am amounts of fabric that you need to buy. Right at the bottom of each view, of um, each view, view C say, shorts with tie belt, you also need interfacing. So this tells you right at the bottom under where your fabric um, yardage is that you need to buy you will also need whether it's half a yard or half a meter or whatever it is of interfacing and interfacing stiffens fabric you can either sew it on the certain ones that you can sew on certain ones that are iron on um, and it like goes round your collars or your waistbands or inside a fabric belt to make the belt stiffer there's lots of different uses but if you need it for your pattern it will tell you underneath here um, and then the last thing on here, the finished garment measurement. This is explaining the size. When it's finished and sewn correctly, the size the garment will actually be, which is you, if you measured yourself and sewed it exactly to your size, 
you won't be able to bend or anything in the it, so it's, it's the dress that you're, wear, you're making you won't be able to bend you won't be able to sit down the garment size at the bottom of the pattern is the measurements after you've sewn the sewn it and it takes into account a little bit of ease ease the call it movement otherwise so that you can bend over you can sit down you can stretch your arms up you can put them to the side you can put them so it gives you the extra bit of movement that you need to be able to live basically otherwise you'd be like stood in a straight jacket like that all the time you won't be able to move okay so that's basically a pattern there's nothing hard about that the best thing to do is to get a pattern have a look at it have a look at the envelope read it see if it makes sense if not come back and watch this video again any questions message me in the box below now what i'm going to do is go inside the fab inside the pattern and show you what comes out of it as i say i'm out on this so they're never stuck down they're always just so either tucked in or left loose like that generally in shots I tend to tuck them in so that the edges don't get raggedy okay so inside the pattern you have inside the envelope you have the pattern pieces which are on a thin tissue paper we'll come on to those in a second you also have there's usually an instruction sheet and a layout or oh, special instruction sheet as well and how to do the directions on how to make what you make so this one is there's different languages on here as well uh is this one oh sorry this one is in spanish espanol uh i think that's it i'm not sure so we don't really need that one because that one's just in the different languages that you need so we've got the english one i'm hoping yeah right now just check when you open a pattern that you've got inside the same pattern with this number the same that the patterns match up to what it says on the envelope k1069 k1069 well 1069 then you know that um the instructions and the pattern layouts are the same going to be the same as this i have had patterns mixed up before not only once or twice um where I've been cutting it out and I thought, oh, this doesn't look like a skirt or whatever. And it's been the pattern pieces put back in the other directions and the pattern pieces put back in the wrong envelope. So just be aware. Usually when you get them from the shop, there's no problem whatsoever. If you're sewn, which is why I was saying about when you've done the um, sewing for your pattern, you need to make sure that you've put your pattern back in the envelope and then all your things are together. I've done it and put them in the wrong envelope. I've had two or three things on the go at once. And yeah, I kicked myself when I bought some fabric and then cut into it. And I thought, well, this isn't what I'm sewing. <laughs> so that taught me very well. The lesson always check the number matches the number on the pattern piece over here. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then on the front of here, this shows you the different views again, a sketch of the different views. And we open this up. It's a big sheet. I think I've got two pages, I think, as well. Now, on this first part of your pattern, you've got your picture there, your drawing of your garment. This is showing you the key for the layout. Okay, now the key cutting layout is if it's a grey colour. You put the pattern printed side down. If it's a white colour box, you put a colour pattern, should I say, you put the printed side up. That's important. There's also a key here, star, C and a like a snowflake. It's a C special cutting notes. So we need to know what that means. So let's have a look. Let's find where it's home with what that means. Um, let's see. On the left.
layout part, which shows us how um, the fabric's going to be put onto the, uh, the pattern's going to be put onto your fabric, it shows some pieces um, that are, uh, I'm just trying to find your asterisk ones. Um, a minute. Have we got a star or have we got an asterisk? Hmm. Can't see it at the moment. Charlie, sorry about that. Okay, so you've got the pattern pieces, what you're going to use for your, it shows you a picture of what the pattern pieces look like, and it also tells you what that pattern piece is down here. So it'll show you what they are and it'll tell you what they are. This line down here is the grain of the fabric. So this line needs placing parallel to the selvage on the fabric, which we're going to come to in the next video. Now, going back to here, let's have a look. I will find them things when we come to them. There we go. Right. All these options on here, so we'll take one. This is showing you for this particular length of fabric, width of fabric, you need to lay your pattern pieces out in a particular way. Let's do this one. Right, so we've got the pattern piece that this is saying to make sure you get all your pattern pieces on, on this particular size of fabric, you need to lay it like this. Now we've looked at it before, and the key said if it's white, it's pattern piece facing up. If it's grey or dotty to a shaded part, it needs to be pattern facing down. Okay, so that's basically what it is. This is showing you your grain line of your fabric again. So what that means is your selvage, which is the finished edge of your fabric. As I said, we're going to come on to that next video. Both the fabric's been folded in half, so both edges that are finished on the in the factory are together. So your grain line goes parallel to this selvage here on each pattern piece. So whichever way that arrow goes, you know that has to be parallel to this finished edge of the fabric on here. That's important because the fabric is made up of two intersections. There's a weft and a warp of the fabric. It has to be at 90 degrees and this has to be parallel on the grain line because if you get it not quite right, the fabric will stretch out of line. So you might be wearing something that should be fairly structured like a suit jacket and or trousers and if you move it's going to hang funny. And if, if you've seen them in the shops, particularly the, the cheaper shops, cheap high street shops, where the hem of a trouser is a bit, it's not quite flat or straight it's a bit looks a bit wobbly it's probably because the fabric's not being cut quite right it's been cut not at the 90 degree angle that you need it to be so that will become clear when we actually cut some patterns out now found them the special cutting notes <laughs> finally the um snowflake and what was it a snowflake and a star so this is the instruction saying here the snowflake, so the star first of all, if the layout shows a piece extending past the fold, cut out all the pieces except the piece that extends. Then you open out the fabric and then you put the, the pattern piece, rest of it onto the fabric and then you cut it out. It's just making sure that you use as little fabric as you need to get everything on there. So the other pieces where you're cutting two out, two pieces of this and two pieces of that, this one, what it's saying is there's a little gap there where I can fill, but I only need one piece of me, say a waistband. So once you've cut all the mothers out, if you then open the fabric out, you'll be able to cut me out of the, the bit that's left. So that's what that means, basically. And um, anything like that is always clear on, on your actual instruction sheet. The snowflake one, which is this one, this could be different on a different pattern, by the way, so don't just go on this one. Is telling you to mark small arrows along both selvages, which is the finished edge, uh, indicating the direction or design of the fabric. And then fold the fabric crosswise with right sides together and cut along the fold. 
that'll become clear when we cut out next time if it applies to the pattern that we're doing okay so once you've cut all your pieces of fabric out this is your instruction page and it tells you step by step what you need to do on each piece of pattern on each fabric that you've, on each pattern piece that you've cut out of fabric if you follow this exactly your item will work out correct if you miss a skip skip a step it won't so you need to take take your time and concentrate my tip would be before you do any cutting out of anything read the instructions first if there's anything you're not sure about have a look on youtube see if you can do it ask me the question i'll explain how to do it or look it up in the in the uh, in a book or however you're going to do your research if you're stuck with a pattern there'll be the answer somewhere the easiest and quickest way would be to ask me and i'll sort it out for you if i can and come up with an easy answer so look at your pattern read it before you cut anything out take time to be in a quiet time where there's just yourself and you can concentrate and just have a read through it and if you're not sure have another read and then if you're not sure again just leave it and come back to it the next day and it'll make sense it'll make more sense okay so that's the layout page and the start of the instruction page this is the follow-on instruction page now the look as though it might oh, I can't put it that you think oh my lord there's loads on there there's loads on there there's not it's just that the pictures are quite big so it's trying to go into detail to show you what you need to do so the actual instructions are these tiny few lines here and i say if you do each one step by step follow it properly you'll do it okay so i'm going to fold those back up and put them to one side i'm going to show you the actual pattern pieces now but what to do that Put these away like I've shown you, I told you. Uh, to do that, I'm going to have to move the laptop up a little bit and move a couple of things about, have a drink, and then I'll show you. Right, bear with me. I'm going to push you up here so I can get the full length of the table. I'll plop them on there. And then hopefully you should be able to see what we're doing. So, move those up there a little bit. See, I've got my um, my old scissors for cutting fabric, uh, for cutting patterns, because these are now my pattern cutting scissors. Never use your dressmaking scissors, fabric scissors to cut out paper. Okay, so we open up the pattern, and this is quite big. You need quite a big area. If you haven't got a big table. I'd suggest that you cut out on the floor. I've done that lots of times. Um, and it's it's just as good cutting out on the floor. Uh, and then you, as long as you can get your fabric flat and get the layout correct and get your pa space to put your patterns on and your pattern pieces, you'll be absolutely fine. So if I show you this, each pattern piece has got a number. And on the layout, instructions that we looked at it tells you what numbers we are put together like this don't worry about it it's quite strong even though it's only thin tissue paper they are quite strong so look at the first one put it the right way put it way around first and for your particular garment if you need say piece seven this one, can you see me? Yeah, it's piece seven. Okay, so we know on the salvage, which is the finished edge of your fabric, that this arrow has to follow and run parallel to that edge. So this this is the arrow, you can see more clearly now than on the instruction sheet. This arrow, you measure to your salvage. Listen at my dog whinging. I'm going to give him a bit of a stroke. Okay. So you cut out, just roughly, cut out your pattern piece. I'll just cut a small one out, one out, a small piece, and then I can show you what I mean. So first of all, you lay it all flat. You could even mark on the ones that you need. Just cut round, just roughly, 
like so. Put the other bit of the pattern to one side. Okay, so you can now see this better. And this is the front facing on the actual pattern. Danny, it shows you this is number four. It's the pattern 1069. It tells you the sizes. It tells you what it is. It tells you how many to cut. Cut one on the fold. So, because your edges of your fabric are together, this side of the fabric will have a fold. This is saying these arrows mean place it on the fold. So, you will put it on the fold of your fabric, whichever way up your pattern told you to, your instructions told you to put it. And you can pin these or you can put pattern weights on them. I tend to always cut on the actual pattern. Once I've cut it out roughly, I cut the largest size. Because if you need to make it for someone else, say, a mom or if you're sewing for um, other people, you will need a multitude of sizes. Because not everybody will be the same size as you. So then cut round the biggest size. I'll show you how that works in a second. Um, your pattern will have the sizes marked on the piece here. So you can see each line is indicated, each size is indicated on the new line. Now, if I was cutting out, say, for a size 14, please excuse my dog, um, I would just fold over the pattern to that size. And then I would fasten that to my fabric, either using the clips or using weights or pins. So, and then you've got that your particular size that you're making with this there, without actually cutting into it. Okay. Now, on the pattern piece, there'll be other markings as well. So we know what the pattern piece number four, we know all what these are, we know that that means place it on the fold. These triangles are called notches. And these help when you're oh. trying to put two pieces of fabric together to see that you're sewing it correctly or matching it up correctly. So wherever this notch is, what you need to do on your fabric is just make a little snip knot in right into the fabric. Just make sure you don't go past the edge of this V here. Now when you've cut it into your fabric, you'll have a little cut, a little slit in your fabric. When we come to the next piece of fabric that matches this up, that joins this up, we'll fold it over again then you will make sure that that notch on this one and the corresponding pattern or piece of fabric that's got the nick in as well because you will have the corresponding um, on the corresponding pattern piece and fabric you will have cut a little nick as well so whatever joins this here this piece of fabric uh, will also have the same notches in this helps you match up your pattern pieces so there's one there and there's one here so just cut into the pattern and fabric on all the pieces that's got a notch, it could be a double notch, some have double notches. Usually the back of a garment has a double notch and the front has a single notch. So your patterns um, will have, if you're doing a, a centre, uh, like a centre back seam, there'll be double notches in a couple of places down there. Uh, that's to enable you to match both, cent both pieces of fabric that make up the back. Uh, it helps you to match up those those pieces of fabric so that you can sew down the center which is then a center back seam you could also have dots which are classed as tailored marks um, let's see if there's one on one of the other patterns uh, let's see have we got a dot on here you see we've got this is the this is what i'm saying about the triangles notches on this piece that big it's just very on this this has got a notch here so you again you nick into that one and then if this is the correct piece to match with this you put them together when you're in fabric obviously you match the notches and you match your edges up i think that is actually 
Um, so then you sew wherever it tells you to sew, your seam allowance, whatever it tells you your seam allowance is on here, uh, and then you sew them together. And that means they're matched exactly, not just corner to corner, but they're matched exactly. Right, have I got any tailor marks on this? Let's see. Uh, no, I can't see any on there, on these pieces. Oh, I can. Yeah, I can. Right, on this one, which is the front of the skirt, this is the tailor mark there, look, the circle. You need to mark that on your fabric which I will show you how to do that when we're sewing. All you need to do is pop a, now you can get an erasable marker pen, um, which I showed you in the last video, the fabric marker pen. And when you've got it cut out, you, 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 once you've put your pattern piece on your fabric, you've cut it out, just turn the corner back and mark a dot where that is on your fabric, on both bits of fabric, or however many pieces of fabric fastened together, you mark the same dot wherever it is. Okay, and then also, because this is a skirt, we can lengthen our shot. And the length of our shortening line is usually a straight line across the garment or across the pattern. Bunny, no, thank you. Straight line across the pattern. So if you're doing a shorter version, you'd fold that under and only cut to that line. But yet you haven't cut that off, so next time you sew it, if you want it longer, you fold it so you've only cut to this line. But the next time you do it, if you want it longer, you leave that bent out, and then you cut to the bottom. And if you want it longer still, you do exactly the same. I've just got a piece off the pattern that I now need to sew back together. <laughs> oh, this is what I mean about being on your own when you do it. So I do apologise. Uh, any other markings that are normally um, a line and a straight line with two bars which is where the button hole is um, there's usually a dot where there's a, the zip's going to go in that's Taylor's mark and just bear with me one second we'll get the pattern off my dog there we go and I can stick, to it, together, stick it together so, let's see, what else is on here? Yeah, markings. So, um, what have I got any more on here now? This is a box found a pattern, which is quite good really for a beginner. There's not lots of markings and things that you need to be aware of. I will try and draw or get a picture of all the different markings for you and put them onto here so that you can see um the different ones there's markings for um usually if you've got something excuse me say a dress or a top there's usually a circle with a, a cross through the middle of it and that's the placement where your bust um measurement will be your bust level sorry your level where your bust will be where they can adjust from there and um, if the if you've got a longer body or if your bust needs to be a bit higher on the pattern because um, we're not all made the same so um, the markings for that as I say is usually a circle with a square across in it I will as I said try and do a graph or some kind of diagram with all the different um, markings in there so that you've got a list of them um, but they are pretty straightforward. The notches is the main one and the tailor's tack where it's a circle. Um, and what else? It's the common ones, the buttonhole ones. The button is usually um, just a cross. It shows you where the button needs to go. The buttonhole is the line with the bars on the end. And that tells you where the buttonhole needs to be. So you'll find that um, on the pattern piece that has the buttonhole in, it'll match where the button goes on the other piece so when you put them together you know exactly where you're going to be sewing your button on and exactly where you're going to be marking for your button hole um, I think that's about as far as we need to go at the moment with patterns we will go more in depth in them um, as we as we go along uh, but for, for now I don't want to to cause any confusion and give you too much information. This is a fairly straightforward pattern. Um, 
I won't get too engrossed in difficult patterns at this at, at, as a beginner. Um, we can add to them, and we'll as we're going along, and we'll make things and make, and I'll show you more difficult patterns with different markings on. But there's nothing really out of the ordinary that you won't be able to do it as long as you follow what the pattern says you'll be absolutely fine so for today i think that's enough of me rabbiting on and my throat and the dogs my throat's going a bit ugh. the dogs are driving me crackers <laughs> as they do um but i think we will sign off for today please please give the video a thumbs up um if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe and uh, I hope you all have a lovely week and um, I shall see I'm going to upload another video this week I don't know which day probably the back end of week maybe Thursday or Friday uh, and we'll talk about fabric and pattern placement then may make a bit more sense so um, and then the week after we'll actually cut something out on fabric I'll probably cut the pattern out that I um, that I'm doing the ledger suit thing that I bought this one. Probably show you I'll cut cut some of that out, I think. But what I will do is get the pattern pieces cut out off the big sheet and then you can see. But I wanted to show you today exactly how it comes and the massive sheets of paper that it comes as. Um, but if I cut the pieces out that I need uh, and then I can show you how to put them on the fabric um, and how to cut them and the marks and anything else that comes upon here because on this one there'll be a pocket placement mark as well uh, which shows you where the pockets go on the trousers and it looks as though this has got a, a pocket as well maybe but anyhow we'll have a look uh, there'll be lots of markings on there anyway so I'll, I'll show you how to, to, to sew to this type of pattern as well which is a bit more intricate for our lingerie bags we won't need a pattern uh, just a piece of cardboard really and a ruler and pen I think and we'll do it just sizing on a piece of card uh, and then if and when you do want to make a bigger bag say for Christmas as we've said um, you can do it on wallpaper or I bought a kids um, craft roll fab, uh, paper craft roll the other day um, I think it cost me about £1.50 and there's 10 meters on it i think uh, we can use brown paper as well roll of brown paper from post office or whatever you want to do really you've got the old wallpaper left perfect so for today thank you thank you for bearing with me uh, thank you for bearing with the dogs and um yeah enjoy your week and i'll speak to you when i find my mouth to stop okay i'll speak to you later um next week okay enjoy and bye for now please subscribe and tell all your friends to subscribe and get them watching let's get this country sewing let's get britain sewing like we used to do we used to be mega at sewing in this country let's get it going again okay see you later